Okay. Welcome, everyone, uh, to the third session of the Reading Wikipedia Conference in the outer Vergaderzaal. It's uh, the old meeting room in the 17th century uh, Trippenhaus here in the center of Amsterdam. My name is Richard Rogers, Professor of New Media and Digital Culture and Media Studies uh, at the University of Amsterdam. I'm joined in the organizational team uh, by Eric Bora, who is on the balcony up above filming for the live stream. Uh, Esther Veltefrede here, sitting here, um, and Sabine Niederer, uh, all of whom are in one way or another uh, from um, New Media and Digital Culture at the University of, of Amsterdam. Um, they are on the organizational team organizing the live stream, uh, which is on bit.ly, so bit.ly slash reading Wikipedia. So that's the URL for those who are already know the URL and are watching it on the live stream, or for those of you who would like to now tweet it or otherwise make it known uh, to the world that we are streaming live. Also, um, that same URL will have the recording of this session once, or, uh, once, it's, uh, once it's finished. Okay, so <clears throat> the title of the session um, is what we term the research affordances of Wikipedia. Uh, so the notion of a research affordance uh, is developed uh, by Esther Veltefreder in her forthcoming PhD, which is entitled uh, Repurposing Digital Methods, the Research Affordances of Engines and Platforms. Now the term is, uh, is a neologism, it's, a, it's coined, um, and it concerns the extent to which search engines and social media platforms lend themselves to be used for research purposes which are unintended by the engine or the platform itself. Uh, so for example, um, in a very well-known project, uh, Google Flu Trends, you will know or realize that Google Web Search uh, was not designed for monitoring the incidence of flu, as is the case with Google Flu Trends, which provides indications of where flu is raging on the basis of where people are searching for flu and flu-related symptoms. Similarly, there are many other projects um, that have been developed over the past three or four years to monitor the outbreak of flu using, for example, the location and burstiness of flu-related tweets or the amount of traffic to Wikipedia articles about flu. Um, so we are asking ourselves in this uh, session, broadly speaking, what other types of unintended social research may be performed uh, with engines and platforms. So today we take up specifically Wikipedia. So as you could probably gather, already Wikipedia is used in a variety of ways and for a number of research undertakings that are unrelated to its encyclopedianness. Um, and some of those research activities unre unrelated to its encyclopedianness are, are on or will be on display uh, today. So to reiterate, the purpose of our session is to present work that uses Wikipedia to study not Wikipedia, but to study social, cultural, and political phenomena. Um, that is, we are um, not studying the mechanics or the culture of Wikipedia per se, or the online platform or the medium, but rather we're using Wikipedia content um, <clears throat> uh, and data uh, to study a series of phenomena. So these are sort of in order of their appearance. Um, social and scientific controversies using Wikipedia data, that's Tommaso Venturini. Uh, European cultural uh, relations and intercultural understanding, uh, that's uh, Fabian uh, Flirk. Uh, the memory uh, of political uh, and historical events, that's uh, Ellen Ritten. Um, and um, facticity and cultural perception, that's uh, Brent Hecht. And geographies of knowledge, that's, uh, that's Bernie Hogan. And I'll introduce them all uh, to you very, very briefly. Um, so I'd like to get started right away. 